Welcome to UAV Basics. We want to cover in a series of videos topics related to general photogrammetric tasks involving the aerial triangulation and also in our videos the general workflow to the auto mosaic. In this video we want to cover the topic block configuration and how the block configuration can be satisfying or less satisfying for solving the georeferencing process in the photogrammetric task. Block configuration is one of the parts that have an influence on solving the UAV projects and on the side of having off-the-shelf cameras, having not much knowledge about the camera and also that people tend <clears throat> not to have um, a full block configuration setup but more a minimum block configuration setup. We want to go through different block configurations in very general just to be aware how they can be satisfying or less satisfying. A very common case is that people have also now with UAVs GNSS information with high precision, which is in this graphic shown by these purple dots at the bottom of the camera. And we see all camera, each camera has a very high um, position in X, Y, Z. Unfortunately, if you don't have any control point on the ground, then uh, the problem in this block configuration is to solve the focal length because terrain itself uh, does not have undulation, high uh, height changes, extreme height changes, and we don't have a reference point on the ground, and the focal length itself is a very unknown part of our adjustment, and therefore to calibrate the focal length, and also of course the complete camera, will suffer accuracy, because we don't have a reference on the ground. Same thing is if the block configuration is from the other side. If we have no GNSS data with high position accuracy, so on my photos I only have 6 to 10 meter position accuracy on the photos on the top, and on the ground I have control points. If all my control points on the ground are on a similar height, then I don't have height undulation on the ground and if I want to solve the unknown focal length then this block configuration is not satisfying and allows systematic errors and blunders to be introduced into the block which can cause um, less accurate uh, solutions uh, which tend then to have impact on the point cloud extraction and auto mosaicing. Which would help us would be if for example, on the ground, we would have different heights for the control points. If they would be placed in more than 20% height ratio difference to the flying height, then we can calibrate the focal length very accurate. So if we have this configuration like here, it's very good because we can now measure on different heights, uh, tie points, also our control points, and therefore the focal length can be extracted very accurate for this block. Same thing would be on the opposite way if my control points would be on a different height on top of a building or also imagine there would be hills or stuff like that. So as long as the control points are not only on one equal height but on different heights and they can be measured from different images we can um, extract the focal length, which is a very important part for our block uh, adjustment, uh, very accurate. And therefore, having the focal length very well established, we can measure very well. Because the camera is like a measurement instrument in UAV projects. It's like when you go outside and you use um, a total station. And if the total station can measure accurately, uh, to a milli-degree angles and also distances with the laser because it's well calibrated then we can measure very good data and the same thing is for 
UV projects the focal length. Um, if you would fly with two different flying heights, then uh, we can also establish the focal length better. But unfortunately, in this case here, zero control points. So what we would need is either having precise GNSS data with 4 to 5 centimeter for both flying heights, or what we also would need here is to have on the ground control points. Then this block configuration would be nice, but in this case without any control point, even with two different flying heights. Uh, a little bit better is if you would have GNSS data uh, with a high precision on the photos and undulation in the terrain. But because there is no control points on it, we still lack the probability to define the focal length with a high precision and also with without uncertainty. Same thing if we would have control points, but don't forget that all the control points are on one height here. Even we have terrain undulation. So this is already an almost good solution, but still not good enough to have a high probability, but at least we should be able to handle more projects if this is the case. Same thing opposite wise, if I only have GNSS high precision coordinates, but zero control points on the ground and terrain undulation, it's better than having a flat terrain, but still probability is missing. Yeah? I'm focusing here extremely on probability because we tend to see more and more projects where people have sometimes a good solution, sometimes not. And of course, the uncertainty is something that makes the customer um, not feeling well. And to guarantee this, you need a good block configuration and not an almost good block configuration. So this would be definitely the thing you look for were to have either GNSS data high precision on each photo with at least one control point on the ground or in this case as I showed before in the previous slides let me jump to it this slide here where we have control points on different heights with 20% undulation or same thing here with objects on top with different heights of the buildings or any object okay so this would then be the solution we strongly recommend for block configurations. And I want to show you a little bit how they can have an impact if you don't use a good block configuration. We have here a customer using a good flight pattern, very good connection. I don't have slides for the connection, but the image is connected very well. We have a general very good distribution of control points in the corners. We have control points. We have some points in the center. But the GNSS data is not high precision and the terrain is very flat. We don't have strong undulations. It's a, a desert. And therefore, we have this case mentioned from before. And as the focal length is our unknown part, um, with this configuration, the probability to establish a good focal length is not very well given in this project. And if we look here on, at the probabilities of our uh, tie points, then we see here stronger uncertainty error ellipses in the project. And after we introduced uh, more control points, we were then able to enhance this part and to equally distribute this part and to remove uh, the um, uncertainties for this project, but you see how with a not so good block configuration, you tend to we would struggle stronger uncertainties, which means the probability to establish a good focal length it was not so well done for this project. Um, perhaps talking in different ways, it means if you don't have a very good block configuration, then you it's more like you are aiming at a solution with a stronger uh, uncertainty of hitting the right decision. It could be that you find a solution which has a good result in a specific parameter setting. Uh, but if you would change one small parameter, for example, the 
and the distortion parameters for the camera. If you change one value, all of a sudden this can shift in a totally different way and you get a, a wrong uh, block adjustment. So in general, we tend want to have a block configuration with a high stability. So that means where I can, with a high probability, always get to a good result. Uh, one thing that we really have to be careful is if you want to guarantee it, you need checkpoints. Checkpoints will assure you that you uh, established a good um, resolution, a good result for the project, and also to avoid these lucky shots. So, therefore, sometimes if you really have not a block, a good block configuration, um, really to be careful uh, how you adjust it. Okay, so. Um, again, this would be our recommended block configuration. And uh, also a few more things with the block configuration to be aware why we have uh, this emphasis on the block configuration. The reason is that UAV photogrammetry behaves different than classic photogrammetry. And the main reason is the measurement instrument. So our camera in a classic photogrammetric case was supposing that we have a camera with a very accurate interior orientation. So that means our focal length was well established, the distortion parameters were very well known, that means they were a reference, we were treating them almost like a holy grail, so we assumed they were error-free, and therefore when we introduced them, uh, we did not um, um, assumed to have error propagations inside the interior orientation, which means inside the focal length, the distortion values, the principal point. In UAV photogrammetry, this element is also part of the adjustment. So therefore, all elements are uncertain, also the focal length. And therefore, the error propagation effects can be everywhere, also in the camera, so also in the interior orientation. This means, as in our case here on the right side, the focal length was fixed at one specific position. We assumed then errors in the image measurements, and these errors in the image measurements, they cause uncertainties. In When you make this forward cut, you see the area of, um, of this square that uh, is built through these arrays that somewhere our measurement is in this part. On the left side, if I would not assume errors in my image measurements, only already the wrong focal length, which is somewhere in this area, can cause uncertainties if I make a forward cut. So I didn't make a third graphic, but just imagine my focal length is uncertain and my image measurements are uncertain then I would create a very large uncertainty in my forward cut. And this is exactly the case we have to solve in UAV. So therefore, we have more uncertainties, creating very strong uncertainties on our, um, uh, in our block adjustment. To make the whole thing also more complicated is that in our block geometry, we are in general in classic photogrammetry, about a tenth of a pixel to a third of a pixel accurate. But because our camera is an off-the-shelf camera and it's less well calibrated and also the, um, the hardware does not su uh, sustain all the accuracies, our UV is shaking in the air and it's sensitive to temperature, we are only going into the whole measurement accuracy with a half pixel to one pixel accuracy. Therefore, the main target of the classic photogrammetry was in general to minimize globally all the residuals for the complete block. So it's a block adjustment. In the UAV photogrammetry, we have to uh, change perhaps a little bit our thinking. I mean, this is a little bit challenging for our photogrammetric brain, uh, but the main target should be for us solving and modeling the lens and the camera because this is our measurement instrument. It has the strongest impact and therefore 
not only just to minimize the global, the global residuals of the complete block, but really more focusing on solving the camera lens should be our main focus on UAV photogrammetry. And this can be done when we have a good block configuration, because then we already introduce good standards where we can solve the focal length. This does not mean that we then will never have any more problems. We still have our control points itself that have to be well distributed over the block. We still have to have a reliable GNSS system. Of course, our block connectivity has to be well established, so you have to fly correctly to have enough overlap, and also that you um, are covering everything. But if we can solve the camera, we have a good connectivity and a good block configuration, we are already on a good way to have an easy to handle block adjustment. Okay, I hope this uh, video helps you to understand how, why we emphasize so strong uh, the block configuration and with a good block configuration that we think that you can handle many projects in UAV and will have success. Have fun and see you soon. Goodbye.